Hey guys, welcome to my channel. For today's video, it's a really fun concept. I've been thinking of the best way to verbalize this, but basically I am taking eight very popular, very viral foundations that the average person who is on social media might see, might go into Sephora and want to pick it up, but I'm giving my preferred alternative. Now this is not a dupe video, it's not an affordable alternative video. It's just if you go into Sephora, you know that the Kosas foundation is viral, you see everybody using it. If you were to ask me, I might be like, no, 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 this is better. So I'm taking foundations that have similar specs, if you will, similar claims and purposes, and I'm giving an alternative that I think just performs better. This video is all about performance because I think a lot of times we pick up these foundations because we hear how viral they are, they're all we see, but actually there's a lot of other better options within the same store that I think work better. Now obviously this is just a personal opinion. All of these products have gone viral for a reason. This doesn't mean I don't enjoy the viral product. It just means there's a product out there that works similar that I think performs better. So I'm gonna share those alternatives with you. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first very, very viral product that I need y'all to know I don't like this. Not all of these viral products in today's video are bad, but this one for me definitely is. This is the Jones Road What The Foundation. Now this was supposed to be innovative because it's this gel formulation that you put on the face. It's very shiny. Wow. Glowy, I think is the word that they use. It's supposed to work for all skin types, be intensely hydrating. If you ask me, this was kind of a mess. I mean, this video is not meant to slander any of these products, but essentially very, very light coverage, kind of a gel formulation, gives a glowy, hydrated look. This one was a little too oily, a little bit too sticky for me. So I actually have two alternatives for you, and one is an exact dupe but works better and is way more affordable. So that one's gonna be the L'Oreal Age Perfect Tinted Balm. I've talked about this before as being a dupe for the Jones Road. It's a gel formulation, really light coverage, but this one isn't as sticky. You don't have to mix it up. The ingredients inside don't separate. This is everything and more. So much better, exact same performance, but everything that I don't like that the Jones Road does this one doesn't do. So if you want a very light tinted balm that's gonna be really hydrating, I know a lot of those of you with more mature skin prefer that, this is the way to go. Or here's the other alternative. Now this one is very clearly not an affordable alternative, but same gist, same vibe, same specs but way better performance. This is the Shantikai Oil Free Gel Foundation in Vanilla, and this one also had a moment this year, or this past year, in terms of virality, because this was being used on set of Sephoria. Sephoria? Oh my gosh. On set of Euphoria. My head is in Sephora right now, apparently. And that's because the actors are supposed to be in high school, and the makeup artist wanted to give really hydrated, youthful skin, that is what this gives. It again is the same premise as the Jones Road Foundation without the ingredients separating, without your face being as sticky, giving very light coverage, giving a hydrated youthful glow. Of the three, in terms of performance, I would say Chantecai is definitely my favorite. I love this. I used this when I was in high school. That's really bougie, but I did. But the L'Oreal Age Perfect is a great alternative for something more affordable. And this one performs so pretty close to the Chantecaille. It's a little, oh geez, I'm throwing things around. It's a little harder to get a hold of, but the Jones Road, I personally just don't recommend. I didn't have a good time with it at all. Now, a product that I do really enjoy that went extremely viral a little over a year ago, maybe a little longer than that, but this is the KVD A Good Apple Foundation Balm, and this for me was the first viral TikTok product that I'd ever seen before as I was getting into TikTok, and I just, Never forgot about this. This is a cream foundation, so it gives very full coverage, 
that's the shtick with this. And you'll find that with a lot of cream foundations because you have full control of exactly how much product goes on your face. So with a lot of cream foundations, you'll find that you can get maximum coverage. And I really, really, really do enjoy this. I've used it a lot. The shade that I have is a little light for me, but I think if you over apply it, it can look bad, <laughs> okay? But if you use it, I don't wanna say sparingly, but if you are not just slapping a bunch of product in your face, this looks really pretty. I find it to be quite hydrating, but there is a cream foundation that I think is a little bit better for my skin. And by the way, forgot to mention, my skin type is normal to dry. I live in a humid climate. In the winter, it tends to get a little bit more dry, but right now at this current moment, my skin is pretty good. But if I'm wearing a drying foundation, it will bring out some dryness. Just so you know, <laughs> back to what I was saying. There is a cream foundation that I like a lot better that works a lot better for my skin type. It is the Wayne Goss Luxury Cream Foundation. And if you found the KVD to be a little bit too much, a little bit too full coverage, I think this one you have a little bit more range in terms of the coverage because you can get full coverage with this but it's a little bit easier with this to get less coverage with the kvd you have to use a pretty soft hand in order to not get something with full coverage but with this wayne goss it's easier to get a more natural wearable look but you can build it up to get more coverage you are going to get more coverage with the kvd but anyways this i think looks a little less cakey on the skin which was a big complaint about the kvd it looks more natural I think it applies a little bit more smooth and again not slandering the KVD I also enjoy the KVD but if I have these two products in front of me I'm going to reach for the Wayne Goss over the KVD if one of my friends is in store and is picking this up I might be like hold off I know something better and it's this a big trend in complexion was lighter coverage glowier kind of foundations, tinted moisturizers, that whole vibe, which funny enough, I really wasn't the biggest fan of the ones that launched this past year because I felt like they were trying to be too glowy and have too many skincare infused ingredients. And the result of that was product that would break up would look a little heavy on the skin, just wouldn't wear well. So actually a lot of these skincare based products, I just wasn't a fan of. So let's start off with the Tower 28 Broad Spectrum Tinted Sunscreen. Now this is popular. Tower 28 is a huge, huge brand. They've had quite the year in 2022. And I just simply was never in love with this product. I never thought it was bad, but it was kind of a subpar tinted sunscreen and I think it gained a lot of popularity just because it was in that natural clean makeup kind of vibe but I have a tinted sunscreen that I think is better it's a little bit more on the costly side but this hourglass illusion hyaluronic skin tint is also amazing not that it well I don't think the tower 20 is amazing but the hourglass one is amazing so this one has bounds and leaps better performance if you ask me. This one also has sunscreen just like the Tower 28. It provides a lighter coverage as well, but I would say both of these, you can build up to a lighter side of medium coverage. I think that the Hourglass wears better throughout the day. I find that the Tower 28 will break up on me pretty quickly. So I love the Hourglass so much better. I think my skin looks smoother with this and they have the same benefits. The Tower 28 does have a little bit more SPF or a lot actually. Tower 28 has 30, SPF 30, and then Hourglass has SPF 15, but just apply your sunscreen underneath and I think that you will be okay. Overall performance of the Hourglass is a lot better in terms of a tinted sunscreen. So I have not been in love with the Tower 28, but I've been using it. I have actually used it recently and there's really nothing special about the performance. And I noticed that with Hourglass, I feel like the Hourglass is special. And this is an underrated product from Hourglass in general. Next up, anything that Rare Beauty comes out with goes viral. And you know what, Rare Beauty, they have done a great job with their products. So this was a big deal when the Positive Light Tinted Moisturizer came out. So again, another tinted moisturizer sunscreen kind of product. This one I liked even less than the Tower 28. I felt like this one looked 
thick on my skin and the glowy properties of it really emphasize my texture and my pores. So if you're looking for, this actually gives like medium coverage. So if you're looking for a lighter side of medium coverage, glowy tinted sunscreen situation once again, another one that I would recommend over is the It Cosmetics CC Nude Glow SPF 40. So this one I believe has even more SPF, yes. Rare Beauty has SPF 20, the It Cosmetics has SPF 40. They both give a medium coverage, brightening, glowy kind of effect. But I like that the It Cosmetics, I think it wears a little better, it looks less thick on my skin. And again, very similar products, very similar claims, but I think overall the It Cosmetics looks better, performs better. I will say, I think the It Cosmetics is a little bit more foundation-y as opposed to the Rare Beauty, which is more tinted sunscreen-y, but it has a lot of coverage for what it is. But nonetheless, I want the sunscreen. I want the glowy, illuminating finish. I want it to be quick and easy. I'm definitely reaching for the It Cosmetics CC Glow over the Rare Beauty. Okay, this one, I've had this for a couple of years, but I noticed a lot of people using the Elia Super Serum Skin Tint another freaking skin tint, but I actually really, really love this. On its own on my face, I find it doesn't give me enough coverage, but I love mixing this in with foundations to give the foundation a lighter coverage or a more smooth blend because the consistency of this when mixed with another product, it makes the skin look so skin-like. It is a beautiful product, but there is a serum-based product that I am reaching for over this, not to take away from this because I think this has many benefits that the product I'm about to speak about doesn't do, but if you're looking for a light serum-based kind of coverage product, the Kali Ray Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint is amazing. And both of these are clean beauty brands as well. So if you are looking into clean beauty brands, I think Kali Ray is a totally underrated one. This gives more coverage than the Ilia, but it does have that very liquidy serum consistency. It also is really smooth and skin-like on the skin, right? So very similar, you have to shake both. So I actually don't like using the Ilia on its own, but I think the Kali Ray is so beautiful that I do enjoy using this on its own. And the Kali Ray can also be mixed with other products, just like I like to use the Ilia, but the Kali Ray has a little bit more versatility because I just think it looks better all over the skin. It's not quite so oily looking. It gives a wee bit more coverage. So both are great, but Kali Ray is the one that I'm probably gonna reach over the Ilia for most days. Next up, uh, the Kosas Revealer Skin Improving Foundation. I wanted to love this one so bad, but I just felt like it never wore well. Also kind of sat on top of my skin and somewhat emphasized dryness, which is interesting because it is a glowier foundation. It does give a medium coverage, and the big thing here is skincare infused, which you know my feelings on skincare infused foundations. In theory, great performance. I think it makes makeup last less longer. Last a short amount of time. You know what I'm saying. Anyways, lots of people love this, so take this with a grain of salt, but I do have another clean beauty brand that gives a medium coverage, glowy, skin-like kind of finish. That is the LYS Triple Fake Serum Foundation. I actually find these two to be very, very similar to one another, but in my opinion, the LYS is better. So I'm actually wearing both of these foundations on my face today. I have the Kosas on this side of my face, and it looks fine. I didn't have any complaints, but where most of my complaints arise with this foundation is over time, I look oily, my pores start to separate, and I look a little dry, and the foundation itself I find to be sitting more so on top of the skin. It's still a decent foundation, right? But then I put the LYS foundation on the other side of my face and immediately I could tell the difference. They both provided that same medium coverage, the same level of glow, I would say. And I don't know if the LYS is skincare ingredient infused, but they just remind me of each other being that they're both clean beauty brands. And side by side, the LYS, it just looks better. The Coast House, well, it doesn't look bad. You can tell it's just sitting on the skin just a little bit more, whereas the LYS, is 
combining with my skin. It's looking good. It is sitting like skin. My skin likes the LYS a lot more, whereas it's kind of pushing away the posads. It's not quite being one with the skin. So they are very, very similar foundations, but I just find the LYS to look better, look more skin-like. These are a good one. I'm really proud of this comparison because the LYS, it just is better. Now these two I would say are pretty different products, uh, but the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, you know, this was a you either love it or you hate it product. I was not a fan of this. I thought it looked really heavy on my skin. It just didn't do well. It also looked a little bit dry on my skin as well despite it being glowy. So I wanted to offer a glowy foundation that I think doesn't look too thick on my skin. And these two most definitely are not alternatives to one another, but it's just a glowy foundation that I like better, which is the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. I find that this does not look heavy on my skin and it still gives a really pretty glow and they do have similar levels of coverage. I would say the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin probably has more coverage up front, but you can definitely build up the Dior, and that's the thing. If I build up the Charlotte Tilbury, I find that my makeup looks worse and worse, whereas with the Dior, if I build it up, it still looks quite skin-like, and I think overall Dior just does a fabulous job with their foundation, so I wanted to throw in the Dior Skin Glow Foundation as an alternative for any of the glowy foundations that you might be looking at. It wears better. Everything about this is better, if you ask me, than the Charlotte Tilbury. But I know a lot of people really do love the Charlotte Tilbury, so take this with a grain of salt. But I was just a person that did not have success with the Charlotte Tilbury, and I much prefer a glowy foundation like this. So this is another setting where if my friend is looking at this glowy foundation, I'm like, if you want beautiful glowing skin, Maybe look at Dior. They have a great foundation range. They won't let you down. Okay, the last product is another one that's not similar. So there is potential that this recommendation might not be for you. But I did want to talk about this super duper viral yummy skin product from Danessa Marks. Now this is unique. I do not have another product in my collection like it. It is a blurring balm powder. It has kind of a cream like balmy formula that dries down a little bit more powder-like. Extremely unique, extremely drying on my skin. I saw just from reviews, it seemed that people with more oily skin were the ones that had success with this. I had zero success with this. But if I had a friend who was going into Sephora looking at these and she had extremely oily skin, there's a foundation that I would recommend over this and that would be the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is the longest foundation ever. If you have oily skin, I recommend this foundation. So not very similar, but if you do have oily skin, I find this product from Estee Lauder to be a little less finicky and it's less of a risk as well because there are people that just don't like this Danessa Myricks product, might not drive with it, might not love figuring out the best way to work with this product, and I just feel like the Estee Lauder is foolproof. It just has a much higher success rate, but these are not similar, so don't let this sway you from purchasing the Danessa Myricks. I just think there's a higher chance that you will enjoy the Estee Lauder. So anyways, there we have it. Those are my alternatives and recommendations that I have for you guys over some very popular viral products. Like I said before, this does not mean the viral products aren't good. I just have products that I would prefer to use over the viral ones and I wanted to share which ones they were. So let me know if you enjoyed this style of video and you want me to go over some other products that I like better than viral products. List the viral products down below that you want me to share that I might know of better than. I'm not guaranteeing to feature them in a video because maybe they do deserve the title of being viral and I don't know what's better than them, but I'd love to hear what viral products you would like to see me show you what I think is better. <laughs> so anyways, if you haven't liked this video or subscribed to my channel, make sure you go ahead and do that and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.